I just had a major aha in the midst of a Monday morning kind of continuing education session for myself that I couldn't wait to share with you guys. So if this is your first time joining me, my name is Tara Walsh. I'm a business coach for beauty service-based businesses, and I've been teaching beauty service-based business owners how to grow their clientele, their sales, and their team since 2016, so welcome. The aha I had this morning was when you are at a certain level of business, and we're gonna call this multiple six to even seven figures, business is boring. What? Yes, so if you have not reached six figures in your business yet, you are likely in a state where you are hustling, right? And you're just kind of throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall, see what sticks. You're trying out a bunch of different services. You're trying to increase customer lifetime value. You're trying to learn marketing, trying to build a clientele. All of those things are happening when you get to trying to get your way to about six figures. Now, for those of you that charge a premium price point, you can get to six figures and even beyond by yourself, right? You don't need a team. You don't need all the complications that come with having a team um, and scaling your business. Cool, cool beans. Stay there if you love it. Uh, for those of you that want to reach past six figures and even into multiple six figures and seven figures, I'm gonna share with you something that I've been doing for the past year and a half but didn't realize that that's what was happening until just now. And that is getting obsessed with the data part of business. Now, I am a self-proclaimed, was not good at finances, money issues, money mindset stuff, didn't know my numbers, felt like I sucked with money. That was all me in 2016, 2017, 2018. 2018, I decided I'm just gonna start getting curious about business financial stuff. So it has been an ongoing journey. Um, I'm a lot better at it now than I was two, three years ago, and I'm way better than I was last year, and I'll be better next year because I'm taking time to intentionally focus on that part of the business. And I've had multiple six figures in this business for several years in a row, and I've kind of been capped, right? Like I've kind of hit a ceiling where I can't quite get past this one revenue goal that I want. And in 2023, I have a really, really, really aggressive financial goal. Uh, three quarters of a million, if you're asking, 750,000. That is my goal for next year. And it is an aggressive growth goal for me and my team. So I don't go like, mm, okay, here's hoping we made it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually planning out and strategizing how we're going to get there. And I have a very clear path and it's actually a very conservative path based on what our current services are and um, where I want to take these programs and what I plan on doing. So this morning I found myself kind of getting more into the numbers of the business, really looking at historically what we've done. And that means that I'm looking at profit and loss statements. So if you don't actively have profit and loss statements that you can access at least once a month, that would be my first suggestion for you. Get with an accountant, have them build out something in QuickBooks is kind of like the go-to bookkeeping software for all businesses. And just have it so where the money coming into your business and the money going out of your business can be pulled up in a report that you can start to look at. You don't have to know what it all says yet. Just start with being able to track money coming in and money going out of the business. Because what that does is that shows you historically what has gone on. It doesn't tell you what's going to happen in the future necessarily. So historically, we have some data points to look at. And a lot of what my work has been over this past year is getting curious as to why those numbers are the way that they are. And what can I pick on one number, just one number that I wanna focus on, on growing and making it look better than it did previously? So a lot of times what happens in those that don't actively look at their numbers or don't know their numbers or just kinda of put the blindfolds on thinking, hoping the numbers will get better at some point, is that you're driving your business blind. Because your business has very, very, very clear instructions on what it needs. But chances are, if you've never spent time looking at what the data is or the numbers of your business, you're running based off of feelings at any given moment. So at any given moment, you're like, I feel like business is going well. I feel like I've been busy. But then you look back last month and you're like, I didn't pay myself. What happened? I thought I was busy and it was just wasn't worth it. Especially when you're starting to build out a team, if you've never really paid much attention to the numbers or you don't know what they're saying, all of a sudden you're going to start throwing money at team and you're just going to keep hiring more team members. But if you actually dug into the data, you may find that you're losing money every time that team member takes a client. I've had plenty of clients have that reality when we actually dug into the numbers. So what just clicked for me was that once you get to kind of a six, we'll call it the hundred to 200,000 range, you kind of get stuck and you're in a season of like, what the heck? I had a lot of growth. Like I'm, I'm doing really well, like cool. I want to grow past this. I've kind of reached this, this ceiling where I can't quite get through. 
And likely it's because you're still operating from that hustle, right? Still trying to throw a bunch of different things at the wall. Well, if I add on higher price services, will that help me get through that block? If I uh, sell more retail, will that help me get through that block? If I move locations and I'm able to take more clients, if I work more, all of this hustle is what's actually preventing you from growing past that ceiling that you reach on the 100 to 200K range. What you need in order to get past that, to reach multiple six and even into seven figures, is optimizing your current systems and processes and just keep doing what's already working and just get better and better and better at it. It's not adding on more services. It's not. It's not doing the fun, exciting things. It's not trying out a whole bunch of new marketing strategies. It's not going on TikTok and YouTube and Google My Business and Instagram. It is doing what's already working and getting better and better and better and more efficient at it. And chances are, if you want to get to multiple six and even seven figures, it's building out a team that can then run those processes that are already working. So if you have already reached some level of success, it's now time for you to start to get how it works for you as the individual onto paper and start writing it out as a process. That means that once you have it written out and you have some level of success, because you've already done it, right? You've reached six figures, give or take. Um, then you can teach somebody else to do it and now you start to get your time back so that you can focus on the, the other systems and processes in your business that are gonna help grow your business. Every single one of you, if you've gotten to, even I would say if you're a solopreneur, if you've reached sixty to $75,000 a year in sales, you have a level, you have proof and evidence of success. But the more intentional you can be about how you did that, how you create the results and the experience for your clients and customers, the more systemized you can get with that, the step-by-steps, then you have something you can teach somebody else to do, pay them to do it at a cheaper rate than it's costing for the owner to do it, you get your time back so you can then spend time doing the things in the business that nobody else can do because you know what? Doing services, I'll be honest, is one of the lowest value things that can be done in your business. Yet when you're solo, that's that's what you spend most of your time doing. But providing the actual service or experience is very basic. It's not rocket science. It's a step-by-step process and you can teach somebody else to do that and pay them a pretty affordable rate to do it that then frees you up to do things like strategy and marketing, right? So consider this, if you have two team members that work underneath you that do the exact same thing that you do, you've trained them to get the experience and the results that your customers have come to know and love about you, and now they're doing it, okay? So instead of you spending an hour in the treatment room for $70 an hour, $80 an hour, $90 an hour in sales, whatever you charge, now you can actually do some marketing in that same time and get two clients in at that same rate to go to your team members. So in the same hour of your time, you have now generated double the amount of sales for the business because you were spending time marketing, doing the things to draw clients in. Then you can also focus on, okay, let's look at how many new clients came in last month and how many of them came back for their first fill appointment if we're talking about lashes. That is a metric that you can track to see, is it good? Like, did we have a 70% retention rate on clients? Like, we had 10 new clients come in and seven came back for their first fill. That would be data to look at and observe and see, can I do better? Next month, can I get 10 new clients in and get eight of them to come back? Right, that's a 10% increase in the number of clients retained. Even how many clients came in for their second appointment, their third appointment. You can start to look at where the business needs your attention as the owner. When you're so busy in the treatment room, you don't have time to look up because you're got, you gotta generate sales. But when you start to get the sales generating tasks and processes off your plate, all of a sudden your time is leveraged for much higher level strategy and that, the data-based decision-making in your business is how you start to get past that 100,000 mark, that $200,000 mark and beyond. You wanna get to multiple six figures, you're gonna need a team. You're gonna need systems and processes. You're gonna need to know how to predictably get client results and experience so that you can continue to grow your business. Because look, if you can't get consistent results in our experiences, you're gonna have a leaky bucket situation. You're gonna be doing all this marketing and getting new clients in the door, but they're not staying. And that's wasted money. So that's what I want to encourage you and kind of get you curious about is how do you start to 
look at your business through the eyes of process, right? Like step by step. How do I greet a client? How do I apply? What are the first steps I do to analyze their eye shape? How do I check them out? All of those are systems and processes. How can I then look to maybe hiring someone to teach them how to do that so that now it's not just me producing sales. Now I have another person producing sales and we're getting further and further away from you trading your time for money so that your time can be best spent in growing and scaling the business. So if you have any questions on what that looks like, how to get started, send me a DM, hashtag hire, happy to talk to you about it. It's I'm obsessed with data now. I didn't used to always be that way, but I see how much easier it makes business because the business will tell me exactly what, what needs to happen next, whether it's you need to increase sales, you need to work on retaining more clients, your customers are not getting the results and experience that they're being promised, their marketing, your marketing needs improvements, you need to lower your costs, all of that is data-based decision making that your business is going to communicate to exactly what it needs and it makes life and business a whole lot easier. All right, guys, have a good one.